designing safety instrumented systems in the process industry. In this module, we will introduce you to fundamental terms and concepts that play an important role in selecting sensors, control systems, and final elements. The module is based on the contents presented in the previous e-learning modules on functional safety. As a result, we recommend watching the modules 1 to 3 so that you're familiar with the topics presented there. Modules 1 to 3 so that you're familiar with the topics presented there. When engineering and designing safety instrumented systems, various unavoidable questions come up, which may also have repercussions on the operation of the plant. What is the exact task the safety instrumented system is expected to fulfill? That's to say, which action is to be triggered under which conditions? Which architecture must be selected for this? That's to say, how high is the probability of failure on demand of the safety instrumented system? Which devices can be used? And which evidence of their suitability do the manufacturer and user have to provide? What maintenance is required? And how and how often must functional tests be performed to have a positive effect on the maintenance interval? The essential international standards dealing with functional safety in the process industry are IEC 61508 and 61511. While IEC 61508 is directed at manufacturers and suppliers of equipment, IEC 61511 is directed at users such as planners, constructors, and operators of safety instrumented systems. As a result, both standards cover successive stages in the overall process. IEC 61511 which is the decisive standard for device selection and sizing, makes frequent references to the standard for developing electronic components, that is, IEC 61508. If this standard cannot be applied to a component, or if it does not entirely cover the component's function, as is the case with mechanical components in field units, for example, it's permitted, according to IEC 61511, to provide evidence of suitability based on prior use and taking into account a quality management system implemented at the manufacturers. The German VDI VDE Directive 2180 is oriented towards IEC 61511 and substantiates it in terms of practical implementation. The IEC 61508 and 61511 standards form the framework for determining and implementing safety in industrial processes. The safety life cycle described in IEC 61511 is of particular importance. It defines all stages required to analyze hazards and risks, to engineer and instrument safety instrumented systems based on the life cycle as well as to run and service them together with the plant. In this module, we will look at the aspects of designing and engineering a safety instrumented system, or SIS, discussed in section 11 of the standard. Based on the hazard and risk assessment, it becomes necessary to install a safety function at a certain location in the plant. Such a function may involve shutting off the medium flow or draining the medium from a plant section. In addition to the function's effect, it's decisive that the function is completed within a certain period of time. Both criteria are crucial to device selection. When the outflow from the tank in our example is too small, the inflow must be shut off. This must be done so quickly that no impermissible filling level is reached. The required function can be implemented by using a control valve, which shuts off sufficiently and closes quickly, in combination with a suitable level sensor and a control system to link them. A fundamental requirement placed on a safety instrumented system according to IEC 61511 is that safety functions be separated from the functions in the plant that are not relevant to safety wherever possible. 
This simplifies the instrumentation architecture, the overall risk, as well as the risk assessment. It also makes engineering, maintenance, and testing of the basic process control system, which is used for normal control operation, much easier. If the function cannot be separated, it must be ensured that the safety instrumented system always has priority over the basic process control system. The safety instrumented system is separated from the basic process control system to ensure that the safety system continues to function properly when the BPCS fails. A similar goal is pursued by the hardware fault tolerance principle stipulated in IEC 61511 to achieve higher SIL ratings. In sensors or final elements, for example, hardware fault tolerance is achieved by redundancy, which means that if an individual element fails, the associated function is sustained by a further independent element, or possibly several elements. The HFT values demanded by the standard are minimum values, provided that the dominant failure mode is to the safe state. If this is not the case, it must be compensated for by implementing a higher redundancy, which means increasing the hardware fault tolerance by one. If the device is proven in use, however, the HFT value can be reduced by one. A more comprehensive assessment according to IEC 61511-1, section 1142, applies to programmable electronic logic solvers. Redundancy is understood to mean that there is more than one element to perform a function, such as a chain to hold a weight. The obvious approach is to use a second or further identical element. While the failure of a single element causes the function to fail, the function is sustained with a redundant setup, unless all elements fail at the same time. This is referred to as one out of n systems. Any additional element reduces the overall probability of failure by one power of the single probability of failure p, provided that failures with identical cause do not need to be taken into account. For example, a probability of failure of 10 to the power of minus 3 is reduced to 10 to the power of minus 6 in a 1 out of 2 system architecture, and even to 10 to the power of minus 9 in a 1 out of 3 architecture. A sensor is considered as having little repercussions on the process. This means that, in principle, redundancy can be achieved by an arbitrary arrangement of two or more sensors, provided they measure the process variable they're expected to measure in a technically appropriate way. The task of final elements, however, is to influence the process. In the case of control valves, this means, completely or gradually, shutting off or opening a pipeline, and thus influencing the flow rate and pressures. As a result, the required arrangement of redundant valves depends on how the flow of the process medium can be shut off or maintained in case one of the valves fails and does not assume its fail-safe position. With fail-close valves, this is ensured by connection in series within the same pipeline. With fail-open valves, however, the valves are connected in parallel and a bypass around the failed valve is opened. Connection in parallel is always required in the case of redundant pumps to ensure that a failed pump, depending on its design, does not block delivery within the pipeline. If two or more identical elements are available that can perform a required function alone, this is referred to as identical redundancy. One problem of this obvious approach is, however, that all these elements can be affected by faults with an identical cause at the same time, which means that the function would not be guaranteed despite the implemented redundancy. If the same algorithm or the same software is used in several electronic devices, it constitutes an identical element. Under the same conditions, the same fault occurs in all units, which renders identical redundancy impossible. 
Such problems can be avoided by implementing diverse redundancy. That is, using different elements with different failure mechanisms to ensure performance of the same function. Identical redundancy implemented by using several identical devices for the same function is, at best, important in relation to stochastically occurring faults. Nevertheless, such faults play only a minor role in sensors and final elements. Here, effects produced by the process conditions and the process medium are far more important. A way out of this is to select diverse redundant devices but diversity should not be restricted to using different types. With sensors, particular importance should be placed on selecting different measuring procedures. In addition to direct level measurement using radar or ultrasound, an indirect measurement based on the pressure of the liquid column could be implemented, for example. In final elements, a similar effect can be achieved by selecting different valve styles such as globe valves, ball valves, butterfly valves, or rotary plug valves. Voting means that the function is performed by the interaction of several elements. Either all available elements are simultaneously involved in performing the function, 2 out of 2, 3 out of 3, etc., or any subset suffices to perform the function for example, 2 out of 3. In the example shown on the left, the failure of one of the two chains causes the function to fail immediately. As a result, both chains are required to sustain the function. In the example on the right, two chains suffice to sustain the function. No more than one chain may fail for the function to be sustained. The excess elements create redundancy making the failure of the function less probable. If m of n elements suffice, up to n minus m can fail without impairing the safety function. To do so, the signals of several sensors are linked with each other in a logic solver, for example. In the example shown on the left, only the probability of the safety function being triggered inadvertently is reduced while the architecture shown on the right additionally reduces the probability of failure of the safety function. IEC 615111 defines a fault as an abnormal condition that may cause a reduction in, or loss of, the capability of a functional unit to perform a required function. Within the context of functional safety, there are two classes of faults systematic and random. Systematic faults have a cause that can be identified and reproduced. Random faults do not have a reproducible cause, which means that they cannot be predicted. If the sights on a firearm are misadjusted, for example, this is considered a systematic fault, since all shots on target deviate in the same direction. Strong winds coming from different directions, however, lead to a stochastic shot pattern, that is, random faults. According to VDI VDE 2180 and IEC 61511, measures against systematic and random faults, as well as measures related to fault tolerance, are required for devices used in safety instrumented functions. To exclude systematic faults with an adequately high degree of safety, it suffices to develop and manufacture electronic devices and systems not used in the field, such as programmable logic controllers, in accordance with IEC 61508. For field units, however, systematic faults can only be excluded by providing evidence of prior use. For random faults, it's necessary to start by determining the required probability of failure for a certain safety integrity level and verify that it is actually reached based on failure-related parameters provided by the manufacturer. For guide values of typical field units, refer to VDI VDE 2180. Fault tolerance is guaranteed by redundancy. 
It depends on the existing risk whether a single-channel version is sufficient or not. Further measures are added in the form of automatic diagnostic functions. Systematic faults in devices used in industrial processes can be divided into three categories. First, there are faults in the device itself, such as improperly sized components, or the use of unsuitable materials, or in smart devices, faults in the microprocessor software. However, such faults are already prevented with an adequately high degree of safety in devices developed according to IEC 61508 or in proven in use devices. Second, there are faults in selecting the proper device for a specific application, such as wrong style selection, improper sizing, or unsuitable material selection for wetted parts. Third, faults may occur while commissioning and operating the devices, even though they've been selected to match the application. This includes improper installation, operating conditions that deviate from the specifications, maintenance errors or too long maintenance intervals. Random faults in technical equipment result from malfunctions in the microscopic range. As a result, they can neither be predicted nor prevented. They are of particular importance in electronic components, such as integrated circuits. The function of a microprocessor or a memory chip is performed by structures in the nanometer range, that is, clearly in microscopic dimensions only slightly above the atomic level. If only one in a billion transistors fails, it inevitably leads to a processing error and, in the worst case, causes the safety function to fail. In mechanical components, individual anomalies in the microscopic range are harmless, since they do not weaken the overall structure. If such anomalies occur with increasing frequency, however, they indicate a problem in the manufacturing process and are thus considered systematic failures. In electronic systems, such as programmable logic controllers, a single component often comprises a number of functional units, which, like the transistors in an integrated circuit, are microscopic in size. In this case, aging and failure are mainly caused by diffusion processes that occur on the atomic level. Only the component as a whole, and not the individual functional units, can be tested which means that the testing depth is limited. However, such systems are mainly used in a defined environment, without contact with the process medium. As a result, their suitability does not depend on the process conditions. This is why failures can conveniently be described statistically. Mechanical systems, however, consist of a limited number of components that can mostly be considered functional units at the same time. As their dimensions are in the macroscopic range, causes of failure, for example wear, can basically be monitored, which means that failures are no longer only detectable statistically. It also means that both during manufacture and during operation, a high testing depth can be achieved. Nevertheless, mechanical systems are used in a wide variety of environments and are sometimes exposed to the process medium. As a result, their suitability or failure strongly depends on the specific process conditions. Consequently, it's hardly possible to describe the failure behavior statistically, since there is no representative base of comparison. In such mechanical systems, the better approach to assessing their suitability is to perform a documented assessment of prior use. IEC according to IEC 61511 requires the manufacturer to implement a quality management system. Users are responsible for selecting a device that fulfills for selecting a device that fulfills the fundamental requirements of their specific application.
the documented assessment of prior use allows users to draw devices suitability for use in safety instrumented systems under comparable operating conditions. As field units used in non-safety instrumented systems basically fulfill the same function, the experience gathered in these applications can be applied as well. If prior use of a device has reached a certain extent and the device has shown a satisfactory performance, the user usually adds it to a list of standard devices. As part of an ongoing updating process, devices with an insufficient performance are removed from this list again. Providing evidence of prior use for a device according to NAMUR recommendation NE130 is made easier if IEC 508 is already applied while developing and manufacturing the device. For manufacturers, this means they have to invest more time and money in the development, documentation, and, if applicable, certification of devices. But this is to the benefit of the user. The type test performed by the manufacturer in accordance with NAMUR recommendation NE95 concerning the device's fundamental suitability remains unaffected, but the additional assessment of safety-related aspects is considerably simplified if the manufacturer applies IEC 61508. Together, both tests ensure a device's fundamental suitability for use in safety instrumented systems. The decisive benefit, however, lies in the considerably shorter prior use period in different applications, which means that prior use can be attested half a year earlier. The achieved prior use status allows devices to be used in the safety instrumented function, but it does not stop the device from continuously being monitored based on the collected prior use experience and the outage statistics as specified in NAMUR recommendation NE93. The proper functioning of the safety instrumented system and the units installed must be checked at regular intervals to detect dangerous undetected faults. This may involve performing a stroke test to discover obstructions of the moving parts inside a valve due to clogging. Testing options during operation are limited as the required valve movement must not have any considerable repercussions on the actual process. Partial stroke testing meets these requirements and can diagnose a complete blockage of the valve. Nevertheless, a valve's actual ability to shut off can only be verified by performing a full stroke test during a plant shutdown. This is referred to as different diagnostic coverage, or DC, ratios. Both partial and full stroke tests not only provide information on whether a valve can be moved, by the repeated mechanical intervention, they also prevent the valve from clogging up in the first place. The maximum duration of a maintenance interval is determined by reaching a limit for the gradually increasing probability of failure. A test with a high diagnostic coverage, such as a full stroke test with nearly 99% DC, resets the probability of failure almost to the initial value of a brand new device. Partial stroke tests performed in between, which have a lower diagnostic coverage, cannot ensure the full functioning but they can be performed while the process is running, and thus more often, which means they repeatedly help reduce the probability of failure by a certain degree. This helps extend the maintenance interval. At the end of this module, we would like to summarize the information provided. Before engineering a safety instrumented system, its exact task must be defined. Based on this definition, the architecture can be determined, particularly concerning the required redundancy, above all in final elements. Additionally, it can be determined how this redundancy is to be implemented. Component selection is based on the pro 